Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. And in this video, we'll solve this AITS problem that's based on the concept of charge distribution in a conductor. Let's read the problem statement. So we have three conducting sheets, one, two, and three, and they are placed parallel to each other such that the separation between them is negligible. So basically this D is very, very small, just like in the case of capacitors. Sheet one and sheet three are given charges plus Q and plus three Q. The cell of EMF one volt is connected between sheet one and three. So we have to take epsilon naught A by D as this and the charge Q is also given. First switch S1 is closed and then switch S2 is closed. Okay, so this is the switch S1 and this is switch S2. So now the question is that when switch S1 will be closed, uh, what is the charge flown through the switch S1? That is question number one. And when S2 is closed, what is the charge flown through switch S2? That is question number two. So first of all, let's discuss the concepts that are required to solve this problem. So concept number one is that if we if we have a system of parallel plates like this, which are separated by a small distance and charges Q1, Q2 and Q3 are given to them, the charges on the plates at the extreme left and the extreme right will be first of all same and it will be equal to the sum average of all the three charges on the plates, which will be Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3 divided by two. Okay, so you add up all these charges divided by two, that will be the charges on the extreme plates as this conductor is isolated from any external connections, the charge on this plate must be constant and the charge on this surface, you can simply find it out by Q1 minus this charge. Okay, and you can similarly do it for all of them. And the next important concept is that let's say the charge here is going to be Q. Then the charge on the plate that is just opposite to this plate has to be minus Q. So, and let's say the charge here is let's say Q dash. So the charge on this place must be minus Q dash. And the charge distribution is this way because of the fact that we need to ensure that the electric fields in the material inside these conductors must be zero. Taking that fact into account, the electric field distributions must be this way. So this was concept number one. And concept number two is that if we have a, and if we give a charge Q to this infinitely long um, charge carrying sheet, so the electric field distribution due to this uh, sheet carrying a charge Q is Q divided by two epsilon naught on both the sides. Okay, so and when we have two plates, and now when we have two similar plates, and the charge on this plate is minus Q, then the electric field in this region will be in this direction. And its magnitude will be Q divided by A epsilon naught. Now moving on to concept number three, let's say we earthed this plate, okay, then there are a few things that you need to keep in mind. And, and the thing number one is that the charges on the extreme left plate and the extreme right plate would become zero. And this will be true irrespective of how many plates are here, irrespective of which conductor is earthed. No matter what, at the end plates, the charges will always become zero. Basically the concept of earthing is that the conductor that is earthed must have zero potential afterwards. So as we don't have a pot formula for finding the potential of this rod, we'll just use energy explanations so let's say if we take a sphere, which was carrying a charge Q and let's say we earth the conductor and let's say this is an isolated sphere and there is no charges anywhere near it. So the initial potential of the sphere before getting earthed was KQ by R and finally it has to be zero because that's a concept of earthing, right? The potential must become zero. Whenever a charged object is earthed, the energy associated with it will be minimized. So that's the whole concept. So this, um, the electric field associated with this sphere was something like this, right? So there, and clearly energy is stored in this electric field. So when the sphere was earthed, this charge became zero. And with that, the energy associated with this sphere was made zero. As I explained earlier, this charge would become zero. And the advantage of that is that the, the electric field over here, or we can say the energy associated with elec this electric field is now zero. That is one way of explaining the, explaining the fact that the charges at the end of the plates must become zero after one of the conductors is earth. We, with this, we can move on to our problem now. In our problem, this conductor, this plate three, the plate three was given a charge of three Q and the plate one was given a charge of Q. So as I described earlier, uh, before any of the switches were closed, the charges at the end will be the sum average of all these charges. So that will be four Q by two, which is two Q. Okay, so immediately after this switch is closed, now we have to use concept three, right? Because now this plate is earthed. So as I said earlier, the charges at the extreme end plates 
must become zero. There is no external connections of this. This switch is open, right? So there is no way charge can flow out of this conductor, which means the charge on this plate must be Q. And similarly, the charge on this plate must be 3Q. Uh, now, as we discussed earlier, charges on the opposite plates in between must be equal in magnitude and opposite in sign. So this must be minus 3Q. And similarly here, the charge must be minus Q. So if we now, if we observe the middle plate, the charge on it is actually minus 4Q. Initially, before it was Earth, the charge on this conductor was zero. And now it has a charge of minus 4Q. So you can say, so a charge of minus 4Q flowed from the Earth to the conductor. Now the value of Q was given to be three microcoulomb, which means the final charge is minus 12 microcoulomb. If you see option B, it's given that after S1 was closed, the charge flown through S1 is 12 microcoulomb. That would be correct. And option A would be wrong. Now the thing is the switch S2 is also closed. Okay. And the potential of this battery was one volt. Okay. Now the, at the outermost surfaces, the charge is still going to be zero because this um, conductor is still earthed. Now charges can flow from this conductor into this conductor with the help of the battery. Now we don't really know how much charge has flown from one conductor to another. So, so what we're going to do is that we know the total charge is 4Q, right? So let's just assume the charge on one conductor is let's say Q. So on the other conductor, it must be 4Q minus Q by charge conservation, right? So now we have to uh, use our principles again. So the charge here will be Q now and the charge here will be minus Q. And as the charge on this conductor is 4Q minus small Q, that must be the charge over here. The charge here must be the negative of 4 capital Q minus small Q. So we had to discuss one more concept. So the electric field here will only be because of these two charges. And the magnitude of that, as we discussed earlier, was Q divided by A epsilon naught. Now let's say this plate is, let's name this plate one and let's name this plate two. The electric field in any direction. So I can write electric field is the gradient of potential. Let's say it's X. Okay. So here the electric field is only along the X direction. So uh, from here we can say Delta V equals to integral E dot dr. I'm only taking the magnitude here, right? There will be a minus sign here as well. So in this particular case, the interesting thing is that the electric field is constant. So I can take it out of the integral. So this will be E times delta L. So let's say this distance is D distance between these two plates is D. So this is simply going to be ED. So the potential difference, the magnitude of potential difference between plate one and plate two will be the electric field here multiplied by the distance between the plates. Another thing is that in the direction of electric field, the potential decreases that that is exactly what this equation means. So as we have assumed the electric field to be in this direction, potential of plate one must be greater than potential of plate two. Now with this, we can move on to our problem. So as this plate one and plate three is connected across a battery whose potential is one volt, we can say V1 minus V3 equals one volt. So the electric field over here, so I'm going to get rid of this minus four Q. So the, the magnitude of electric field over in between these two plates will be Q divided by A epsilon naught. And we assume this to be the positive charge. Then the electric field here will be in this direction and the magnitude will be 4q minus small q divided by a epsilon naught. Okay. What is v1 minus v2? As we discussed earlier, it's going to be the electric field times the distance between the plates. So it will be q divided by a epsilon naught multiplied by d. Now similarly, so in this case, we have assumed the electric field to be in this direction. So as I said earlier, in the direction of electric field, we assume the potential to decrease. So in this case, we have to take potential of three to be greater than potential of two. So we can say V3 minus V2 must be equal to 4Q minus small Q upon A epsilon naught, which is the electric field times the distance. So in this case, the distance is 2D. So we can subtract these two equations. So V2 will get canceled out and we'll get V1 minus V3 on the left side, which is one volt. I can take D upon A epsilon naught outside and I'll get, so after solving this, we'll get the value of Q 18 millicoulomb. They were asked, the question that they were asking is what is the charge flown? So before the switch S2 was connected, the charge on this plate was capital Q, which is three, mi three millicoulomb. And finally, this became small Q, which we found out to be 18 millicoulomb. So a charge of 15 millicoulomb actually flowed into this particular conductor. So option D will be correct in this case. So the answer to this question is option B and D. So guys, if you found this session helpful, please hit the like button. And if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel and thanks for watching.